This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edge, where face attorney investigations prosecutor's path, everybody. Last time, the greatest fiend from already happened, Francisca came back. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> the highlight of the day. Kind of a come-to-Jesus moment. <laughs> You're like, bit. I wonder who this is! <laughs> Anyhow, now we're cross-examining th this preppy loser. I am the best in the world. <laughs> so you're claiming to be Jesus now. Already? I've noticed two contradictions in your testimony. My reasoning is flawless. It doesn't contradict even a single- It doesn't contain even a single contradiction. And it doesn't co contradict a single thing. Hmm, the number of contradictions has just increased to three. Oh, I get it. This is all a part of your plan to mislead me, isn't it? <laughs> well, too bad. Because the best will not be led astray. I feel bad for the woman who marries. <laughs> Have you met that kid? He's not getting married. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Have you but... met that kid? The kid's not going to college. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he wearing gloves? Good like... question. They look cool. It was Kay Faraday who was the culprit. If you believe Kay is the culprit, then I would like to see hear the basis for your reasoning. <laughs> Just sit back and be in awe of my brilliant deductions. Nothing escapes the watchful eye of the best. Before I'd even laid eyes on the crime scene. No, before I was even aware of this case. Yes, I knew that she was the culprit. <laughs> I gotta give him the whiniest sound. Yeah. Being like, yowch. Basis of your reasoning. Yes, ma'am! <laughs> um, well... She broke into the meeting room in order to steal something. Who would steal from the prosecutor group? Like, that seems like a dumb thing I to do. I heard that they were having donuts today, so I, <laughs> so I reached in and I got all the Tim Hortons. But they were all cream-filled. Those are the worst. Those are great! What are you I, talking about? I hate cream-filled. I love cream-filled. I don't want my donuts milk. filled with anything. I want it to have the nice hole in the middle. It'd just be... Mm. Nice glaze. Maybe like a chocolate donut? A chocolate glaze chocolate is the best. Glaze. That is pretty those good. Are really I do good. love those. Actually, Spicers are the best. Spicers, oh, or Spicer. Spicer Orchards in Michigan. Oh it's delicious. Gosh, you should go. So to steal something. Steal what exactly? Um, that's, um... What K. Faraday tried to steal was a file. Its contents, to be exact, an investigative report regarding pr Prosecutor Edgeworth. Do you have any evidence to prove she needed something like that? I'm not the one who needs to present evidence. Isn't that right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Um, yes. I suppose that may be true. No, she needs to present evidence yeah. that she had a motive to do that. What? At any rate, Sebastian, please continue your reasoning. Or lack Here's thereof. Here's the thing. Um, re raise an objection or a hand or whatever. I think that they designed that statue behind specifically to look exactly like Ju Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> and she's like, oh, this is the Justice <laughs> statue. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> like, basically. Wow. Do you have any evidence to prove that no one else but Kay could have committed the crime? Nope! Sebastian, let me tell you what would be the best thing for you to do. Just look into any other possible suspects besides Kay. Right now. Post haste. The best thing for me to do? Look into any other possible suspects? <laughs> According to the preliminary reports, there were no traces of anyone else besides her. Even so, isn't it too premature to declare that she is the culprit? Declaring that she isn't so early into the investigation is a little premature as well, is it not? If only I had evidence that could prove Kay's innocence. Good grief. There is a limit to how much you can falsely accuse someone. It's fine, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have to. Fear not, Kay. The truth will be revealed soon enough. Mr. Edgeworth... Kay couldn't have murdered Miss Crane. If I can just prove that, she will be cleared of suspicion. So this, the hardest part about this guy's testimony is that there's so many contradictions, you don't know which one to, you actually need to present. But I think it's the fact that you need, you need a key card in order to get in. Key card. Yeah, that's good. This is the case that I remember the least out of all of them. Really? Yeah. I feel like I would remember this one the most. 
You haven't played the case five yet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it certainly sounds like you are quite familiar with this room. The best man for the job should know all about the best places. Unfortunately, it seems that you are not the best man for the job. Are you mocking me? That's for you to decide. You didn't even know about this key card, did you? Of course I know about that! You need it to enter this room! Huh? Uh, was it really needed? This foolish fool simply doesn't know when to give up! <laughs> Ouch! Sebastian, do you really suspect Kay? Th th that's right! She's the only one who could have done it! Well then, allow me to ask you. Since this room can only be entered by using a keycard, how did she enter the room without one? Gah! Well, uh, she probably used this and that and, uh... <laughs> oh, did you pull a muscle? Allow me to explain then. <laughs> the door could only be opened by members of the PIC, which means... Yes, that's correct. Hmm? She conceded so easily. Take a look at this. It's a record of this room that I have investigated just a while ago. At 12.52 a.m., the door was opened using Miss Crane's keycard. Keycard record jotted Here's down my thing, organizer. Though, and then Damon Gant used it as I well. I was about to say, <laughs> as per the normal, um, they didn't mention who came in before that. Yeah. It's probable that the killer entered the room together with the victim, Mr. Miss Crane. After entering, the situation must have soared. Soured. Lead oh, soured. Leading to the murder. Your logic holds, but it is still merely conjecture. And it would imply that the killer and the victim were acquainted. No way, pal! Kay doesn't even know the victim! That is merely an assumption on your part. Unless you have any evidence to prove your claim. Evidence is everything. In court and at the crime scene. You have to present evidence that there is a connection. Without it, your argument is invalid. In that case, I trust that you have evidence... To prove that Kay Faraday and the victim were connected. Of course. Oh, okay, she does. What? What? This letter was discovered by Dr. Young in Miss Crane's breast pocket. The victim's belongings? Why did she withhold such vital evidence until now? Could it be she was waiting for the perfect time to reveal it? Come to think of it... And the candelabra dealt the fatal blow. Estimated time of death is late last night. Shut up! What, what is it, Justine? Well, I do appreciate your enthusiasm. Perhaps you should give your tongue a rest. You might pull a muscle. Hmm. I'll read it for you. To Miss Crane, thank you so much for helping with my plan. I'm glad that we can help get help each other get what we want. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. Kay. In other words, Kay Faraday and Miss Crane were accomplices. They probably planned to steal something from this room. P preposterous Wait! That means the main culprit is... It's still Kay Faraday, of course. It just means... Her crimes have increased by yet one more. Victim's letter jotted down in the organizer. Um, but who used the keycard besides that? I'm the main culprit. Don't believe her, Kay! It's all a bunch of nonsense! There's no way Kay would do something like that! Nonsense? Not at all. The evidence speaks for itself. Wouldn't you agree? No. <sighs> I knew that they wouldn't suspect Kay unless they had some sort of proof, but... To think they would actually have such decisive evidence. Nicely done, Justine! Thank you very much. Your explanation is still insufficient. I cannot accept such an argument. Sebastian, would you please leave this to me? All right, make sure you shut Mr. Edgeworth up once and for all. I can't allow their allocations to gain any more momentum. I must turn it around here. And now we actually cross-examine the competent one. <laughs> letter from Kay. The relationship between Kay Faraday and Miss Crane is as documented in the letter. She roped Miss Crane into assisting her with her plan. 
However, for some reason, their partnership broke down. Miss Crane was murdered. But with her dying breath, she managed to retaliate. Her parting gift is this letter, which she tucked safely away in her left breast pocket. Mm -hmm. her, her testimony's even better than ever. Maybe the most perfect it's ever been, sir. Are you gonna be alright, Mr. Edgeworth? Um, yes, of course. How unsightly, Mr. Edgeworth. Save your stoic act for some other time. Miss Von Karma, just whose side are you on? I'm on nobody's side, Scruffy. When searching for the truth, it's best not to take sides. She's got a point. W watch what you say, Miss Von Karma, or else Mr. DeBest is gonna... Best, you say? <laughs> well, I can tell you that the side I'm on is always the... <laughs> How it irritating. Well, I suppose that's one thing we can agree on. <laughs> Rebuttal. So, before we even start this, I want to look at the organizer. And I want to look at the autopsy victim thingy thing. Yeah. This one? Mm -hmm. All right. A picture Victim's of body was discovered in the PIC meeting room. The estimated time of death is sometime between late last night and midnight. The cause of death was a stab wound to the left chest with a candelabra. Right. Head wound was post-mortem, burn mark on victim's hand, mm -hmm. and then that's the photo. So, the letters do have blood on them, correct? The letter that she had in her pocket had blood on it. Okay, but it was in the, the pocket. pocket is also, like, disintegrated if it's on the left. It's covered in blood, yeah. It's covered in blood. Um, what else is there that I'm thinking of? I don't know, we'll go back to the testimony then. Always press. Burner. And just what kind of relationship did Kay have with the victim? In the letter, she wrote, Thank you so much for helping with my plan. Their relationship should be quite obvious. That's right. She roped her into assisting with her plan. I would like to hear about Kay's alleged plan in more detail. Just as she wrote in the letter, she wanted to steal something. What's more, the sender of the letter is Kay Faraday, so it's obvious who the main culprit is. <laughs> Let me do these weird stretches with my hands. That letter could have easily been forged. It doesn't prove she planned to steal anything. If memory serves me right, wasn't she a great thief? Th that's... she's, um, taking a break at the moment. I doubt there's any thief who would inform the prosecutor about their upcoming crimes. Thanks, Kay. You're great. Perhaps she simply returned to her trade without you knowing. I suppose I have no means of denying that possibility. Kay Varde planned the theft and Miss Crane got caught up in it. I actually think this is all truthful. You think do? I think that they that this happened and then like maybe Jill was like, mm-hmm, -hmm, can kill her or something, and then like, I don't know how self-defense Kay killed her in return? Perhaps. That would be interesting. For some reason, you say? It seems your explanation isn't very clear. I'm sure the reason will become clear upon further investigation. But more importantly, there is no evidence to prove that Kay Faraday did not commit this crime. Wait, hang on, I forget. Is Courtney 23? No, she's 26. All right. Okay. <sighs> oh yeah, yeah, she's 26. She still seems very young, though. Yeah. While there is some evidence to suggest that she committed a crime, none of it can truly be called decisive evidence. What about the letter that shows their complicity and the scene of the crime? I think it's fair to say we cannot decisively rule out the possibility that she committed the crime. Miss Crane was murdered. That's it. Yep, that's it. Do you have any evidence to prove that Kay was the murderer? Haven't you been listening? We've been saying that this letter is the evidence. Oh? And where in the letter does it say that she planned to murder the victim? Huh? Uh, um, well, that's... I've got it! It's a hidden message written in invisible ink that can only be read by heating it up. Sebastian, I wouldn't get your hopes up for something like that. There is, of course, evidence that points to her as the criminal. <laughs> Her parting gift is this letter. We searched the victim's left breast pocket as well, but... 
You found nothing, I presume? Naturally, the officer who found the letter immediately brought it to the best man on the scene. The letter was safely tucked away in her left breast pocket, right above her heart. I believe this letter carries Miss Crane's will for the criminal to be arrested. I have no interest in your beliefs. What I'm interested in is the truth. You said that the letter was in the left breast pocket of the victim, correct? I swear by the goddess of law, there are no lies or mistakes in my statement. The letter was indeed discovered inside the victim's left breast pocket. The victim had been stabbed in the left chest area where the letter was hidden. This may very well be an important clue. I don't think that Kay wrote the letter. But unless I can draw out more information here, that thought means nothing. I should start by pressing her for more details. Well, we already did that. Mm -hmm. I think it's this one. Where it's the victim's letter. This is a thank you letter. I just can't remember which thing we present letter. here. Well, but they were they were suggesting that the letter was like. Well, cause. You'll notice that the letter doesn't have the free holds in it from the candelabra stabbing. Oh yeah, you're right. So I'm wondering, do I present the autopsy you, report, I the candelabra, the or the letter. letter? Nope. Okay, let's try the autopsy. It's like the same thing. Yeah. Hey, there are some annoying parts like that. The victim held on to the truth until her dying breath. A truly touching story, indeed. The voices of the dead are soft. One must listen carefully to hear their dying wishes. And Miss Crane has spoken. Kay Faraday is the culprit. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps the voices you've been hearing are actually the whispers of the devil. <laughs> hey! Don't make fun of Justine! Let's listen to the voice of reason. Judge Courtney, please take a look at the autopsy report. I updated it. <laughs> there is no need. I remember it perfectly. The victim was stabbed in the left breast. No, it can't be. The letter was found in the victim's left breast pocket. And that's where the victim was stabbed with the candelabra, right, sir? Precisely. It wouldn't have been possible to stab her there without piercing the letter as well. So, that begs the question. Why was the letter found in the victim's pocket? It's simple. It was placed there after the victim was murdered to first suspicion on decay. Somebody intentionally wanted to create this very situation. In other words, there exists the possibility that the letter was forged by the true culprit. No! The real murderer tried to pin the crime on Kay. That is the only explanation for the letter. And in doing so, the murderer ended up digging their own grave, right, sir? The culprit is Kay Faraday. The letter was, um... Yeah, it was actually found in the victim's other pocket. Huh? What are you saying, pal? The officer's report was wrong when he said the letter was in her left pocket. It's actually in the... <laughs> Foolish fool who continues to make a fool of himself. Is there no cure for your foolishness? Why do you keep whipping me and quit calling me a fool? Yeah! I saved you the trouble of punishing him yourself. Uh, indeed, though I had no intention of punishing him. The letter is stained with blood. No doubt it was found on the left breast pocket. There couldn't have been an error in the officer's report, unless you were the investigator. Uh, uh, say something, Justine! I see you have no objections. Then allow me to continue. There is one more potential suspect in this case. Don't be ridiculous! The killer entered this very room! There wasn't anyone else who did that besides Kay Faraday and the victim! To enter the meeting room, one needs a keycard. And their reasoning assumes that the murderer and the victim entered the room together. This is what we overlooked. If we just discard that assumption, then. This evidence reveals the other suspect besides K. Is it just the keycard entry thing? Yeah. This is the keycard record Judge Courtney handed me earlier. The victim's keycard was used at 12.52 a.m. And there was one more person who also used a keycard. So you're saying this person was waiting to ambush the victim inside the meeting room? The keycard was used at 10.15 p.m. I wouldn't say it's impossible. No, it's impossible. And what makes you say that, pal? You got any proof? Of course I do. 
I myself am that proof. I was the one who used that key card, after all. Key then card record updated in the organizer. Well, you know she's gonna be important. Is there something strange about a PIC member entering the PIC meeting room? <laughs> that proves nothing. The fact that you are in here at all makes you a suspect. Or do you perhaps have any evidence that you didn't kill your colleague? Such nonsense. Why would I... What would I gain by murdering her? Allow me to reiterate what you said earlier. I'm sure it will all become clear upon further investigation. Why would I, a faithful servant of the law, commit a crime? True enough, I entered this room. However, that alone is not the reason enough to suspect me of a crime. If that's the case, please tell me why you entered this room. I had some business to take care of, and some preparations had to be made. Preparations? That sounds pretty suspicious, pal! Unfortunately, I cannot disclose what these preparations were. However... I'm sure you could hazard a guess, Prosecutor Edgeworth. So, she was preparing for my hearing. She must have gathered all the necessary materials. To take away my prosecutor's badge. Oh boy. Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to see young people go head to head so ruthlessly. Uh, hey Batman. Who is that? <laughs> what is that beard? Oh no. What? That takes me back. When I was young, I'd always butt heads with this brash detective. Oh no. And then one day, he just disappeared. I hope he's still doing well. Is he wringing out his beard <laughs> from tears? Here come the waterworks. Yeah, this, this guy, oh boy. Chairman DeBest. That must be his father then. Oh, no. Did she just say DeBest? He did not. <laughs> Hello, Courtney. You sure are full of energy today. And if it isn't little Von Karma, look at how much you've grown since I last saw you. <laughs> two, two things I have to say. Actually, three things I have to say. <laughs> how do you like the voice I gave him? <laughs> it doesn't really match. I don't know what he turns into later, but, like, he's really weird. Um, second, uh, apparently the DeBests do not age particularly well. He's wearing, like, ski goggles, and then he's got his, his weird, like, jacket thing. He's ripped, third, though. Third, I think it's the eyes in combination with the smile and the color of the hair. Take away the beard. He's Mr. Stewart. No, he's not. Like We already have two different Mr. Stewart characters. We don't need a third. Who's the, who are the other ones? Ackby Hicks and Christoph Gavin. Oh, yeah, Christoph Gavin. For sure. <laughs> oh, boy. Actoon, baby. Sir, it has been quite a while. A curtsy? <laughs> you don't have to treat me like some sort of stranger, you know. Remember back in the old days when you'd sit on my lap and call me Unky Boo Boo? <laughs> ah, here I go again. Oh, how I cried back then. Pops, what are you doing here? Hmm? A member of the PIC was killed and I heard that you were in charge of the case. What kind of a prosecutor is followed around by his own father? Hold your tongue. Do you have any idea who this man is? Chairman of the PIC, former chief prosecutor. He's the right hand of the goddess of law. Now, now, Courtney. I'm just an old chunk of coal. There's no reason to speak so highly of me. His smile is unsettling. Yeah, it is. And his theme song is also creepy. <laughs> Please excuse my subordinate's behavior. I am... Prosecutor Edgeworth, isn't it? <laughs> Along with his trusty sidekick, Dick Gumshoe. I'm Blaze the best. I'm the proud father of that idiot over there. Thank you! When that boy was born, me and the missus were as happy as could be, you see. But now, uh, I don't even know where she's gone to. <laughs> but Pops, you need a handkerchief? Ah yes, Sebastian's an idiot, but he's such a good boy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Way to talk about your own son that way in front of everybody. Just like, oh yeah, he's he's so stupid. 
But at least he's nice. He's making me wheeze. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. He's literally just like, yeah, my kid sucks. But, he's here. <laughs> but at least he's nice. He's not an evil person. Oh Quite the doting God. father and son. Doting? He just insulted his son <laughs> in front of everybody. <laughs> Apparently this guy was really hard to translate as well, because, like, the style of Japanese he speaks is, like, the kind a young child would speak of themselves. Oh. Which was apparently, like, impossible to translate. Yeah. So, you... so they just make him say, like, you know, or you see a bunch. Yeah, if you were to translate young Japanese um, into this guy, he would need to sound more like the best. But you need to establish that he's older, for sure, and that he's not completely... Yeah, that would be really hard to do successfully. Hmm. That's also, true. his Japanese name is like Banzai Ichigayani, which means like forever number one. And then oh. his son's name is I Wanna Be number one. Oh. <laughs> now then, Courtney, how's the investigation going? Just realized this is basically a deeper grunkle stand. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Sir, we've established that the culprit is Kay Faraday. We are currently focusing our efforts. There are too many uncertainties in this case. It's impossible to determine that she's the culprit. Surely you haven't forgotten the matter of the letter. I already told you it was just a simple mistake. The letter was in another pouch. <laughs> you talk too much. Now, now, let's all play nice. Everyone just calm down. I'm sorry that you had to witness such an unsightly scene, Mr. Chairman. Wait, do we have his profile? How old is he? We do. He's 68. He's eight years older than old granny. <laughs> He's looking good. Which also means that he had Sebastian when he was, like, in his 50s. Wait, does it say Sebastian's father creepy? No, weepy. Weepy. Okay. Cries a lot. Jill Crane, 33. Mm. <laughs> she looks like a model. <laughs> I wonder if, like, Jill and Courtney were buds. Probably. They were both part of the PIC. Pain in charge. Pain in charge. <laughs> I wish Pain was the leader. Don't apologize, Courtney. I can follow everyone's logic. <laughs> Except Sebastian's, that is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Pops! Chairman DeBest, I am a prosecutor. My duty is to bring criminals to justice. However, I won't make someone out to be a criminal without sufficient motive and evidence. Hmm, I've heard about you and your relationship with the suspect, you know. Ah, to share such a strong bond. <laughs> Kay has assisted the police in arresting criminals countless times, pal. There are too many facets of this case that remain unexplored. I see. The bonds of youth are a wonderful thing indeed. But that... That is that and this is this, you know. What's that supposed to mean? The prosecutor's office needs to resolve this case as quickly as possible. I mean, just think of all the other cases that are piling up. There's no time to waste here. It's unfortunate, but... You understand, right, Edgeworth? What? Now then, K. Faraday. I'd like to arrest you now. Okay. Look at all those badges he has pinned. That's like a, too many. Oh, those are badges? Yeah. Oh, I thought those were like spots that a bullet can't hit him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I won't let you. K's innocent, pal. Or like the jacket version of... You know that, like picture in Red Robin that has all the golf balls. The American flag made out of that golf? Made out of made golf out baseballs, balls? you mean? Or, yeah, baseballs. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> to defy Chairman DeBest is to defy the law. He's it not Jesus. It would be a grave act of disloyalty. In other words, a hearing won't be needed. Are you prepared to lose your prosecutor's badge? Th that's Mr. Edgeworth's badge. You can't do that. Using a prosecutor's badge as a shield. What has the PIC come to? Kay, you haven't done anything wrong. Mr. Edgeworth, it was only for a short time, but thank you for everything. I'm sorry. I turned out to be the criminal. We will make sure to impart your confession to the goddess of law. Nah. <sighs> what should I do? 
When I was young, I wanted to become a defense attorney, like my father. Someone who can fight to save those in need. We have to just hire Phoenix Wright. And right now, this badge is holding me back. A mere badge? For the life of a dear friend? I don't even have to consider it. Alright. Farewell, Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it! Hold it right there, Judge Courtney! What is it now, Prosecutor Edgeworth? This is... your prosecutor's badge. Prosecutor Edgeworth, what is the meaning of this? Consider this my resignation. I am no longer a prosecutor. M mr Edgeworth... What are you doing? Explain yourself, Miles Edgeworth! You... you can't be serious! Mr. Edgeworth! You... you're joking, right? If you aren't a prosecutor, then I... My only mission is to bring the truth to light. If it's the prosecutor's path to turn a blind eye to the truth, then that title is worth nothing to me. I will walk in the path that I believe in. I will not be stopped here. You, you're running away from Von Karma. From me. No matter what you say, I don't intend to go back on my decision. So, you're leaving me behind again! I'll never, never forgive you for this! No, this is all my fault. I'm sorry. If only I weren't here. Wait! Kay! Oh great, she's gonna jump off. Detective the Gumshoe, don't follow me. B but Mr. Edgeworth, boss! I'm not your boss anymore, detective. Th that's that's just too much, sir! It's always been you and me! We've always been a team! Detective Gumshoe, you no longer need to follow my lead. You should try to accomplish whatever you can on your uh, end. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this is bad. We just let a dangerous criminal escape. How could I let her get away <laughs> after all my hard work? You see? Rest assured, Mr. Chairman, this area will be locked down immediately. Good. I expect the best from you, Courtney. Basically. <laughs> to be continued. I just don't want Kay to jump off the roof. Well, maybe she'll do that next time. Yeah, we'll I have guess to wait so. and see. I gotta say though, Edgeworth resigning to putting his prosecutor's badge yeah. down—one of the coolest things he does. No, that's totally like yes. That's really cool and a very interesting twist. I was expecting him to have an objection and just be like, "I don't care if I lose my prosecutor's badge." No, just he's literally him, just like, like get up and be like, Shh. It's so "Don't nice. care." <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. Oh man, next episode is gonna be interesting. We're gonna chase after K, see what happens. Maybe we'll meet some new characters. We'll have to wait and Maybe. see. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.